Canada has the longest coastline in the world. Ocean Networks Canada operates underwater observatories on the Pacific, Atlantic, and Arctic coast of Canada. More than 12,000 sensors provide globally accessible live and long time series information on how the ocean is changing. Ocean Networks Canada is delivering the data needed to advance scientific knowledge and to help make the informed decisions that will shape the future of our planet. Ocean Networks Canada was founded by three mavericks in oceanography who decided that we needed to put sensors in the ocean so we could understand it in real time. Prior to Ocean Networks Canada, data was collected on ships here and there, one point at one time, and then the next day the ocean changes. So we couldn't get an understanding of the full picture of the ocean without these, these sensor systems in situ in the ocean. And that's why it was started. That was the motivation for understanding the ocean fully. And Ocean Networks Canada really is an ocean data and technology powerhouse. We install high-tech sensors. We're now operating over 12,000 of those sensors that deliver data in real time, and it's available over the internet to anyone in the world. And so we deliver this incredible technology with this team of engineers, scientists, technicians, data people, GIS people, who work together to make that happen. And for those who don't know, it's harder to put sensors in the ocean than in space. We operate major ocean infrastructure, really based on sensors that observe the ocean and observe everything in the ocean. Some people think about only whales and water. We monitor whales and water, but we also monitor the chemistry, the physics. We even monitor neutrinos from the universe. So we monitor everything that's possible in the ocean, including things that are hazards like tsunamis and earthquakes. So this wide range of data that we capture for a wide range of purposes that are for scientific research, for public benefit, for decision makers, and also we are there to help industry to grow the sustainable blue economy. The ONC infrastructure uh, collects data on a diversity of different things. It's actually remarkable uh, what the observatories are capable of measuring. And now this, in terms of scientific disciplines, this is everything from biogeochemistry, ecology, microbiology, sediment geochemistry, water column chemistry, ocean seismology, the breadth of scientific fields that, that find a place or have, have representation in terms of the ONC sensors is, is remarkable. ONC has a variety of different ocean monitoring uh, infrastructure and instrumentation that is in situ in the ocean environment. Primarily this takes the form of two cabled observatories, one in the Northeast Pacific Ocean. Uh, this is our offshore cabled observatory. Uh, this is called Neptune. And we also have a coastal cabled observatory. This is called Venus. Now on these observatories, there's multiple different ocean sites uh, that exist in different ocean environments. Um, and now these sites uh, have a variety of different instrumentation that is in the ocean environment that provides um, near continuous real-time data on what the environment is like at, at each particular location. But also we supplement those cabled systems with mobile sensors on ferries, autonomous vehicles, gliders, and we're collecting data everywhere we can using our powerful data management system, Oceans 3. Making data accessible to users around the world is really important for Ocean Networks Canada. We follow what we call an open data policy, so all of our data that we collect is made open and is free for anyone around the world with an internet connection to access. So whether you're a researcher, whether you're a student, whether you're a policymaker, whether you're just interested in ocean science and, and you want to see some cool videos of octopus hanging out on the seafloor, you can go to our Oceans 3.0 data portal and pull up any of this data. We provide a lot of data products for easy interpretation and visualization of the data that we're collecting. Right now we've got about 32,000 people around the world who regularly use our data and we want to grow that number because we recognize that the more people that are able to access data, the better we're able to accelerate innovation. I can do my science deep in the Pacific Ocean thanks to the connectivity that Ocean Networks Canada provide us. I access uh, data, experimental data from Germany through the portal Ocean 3.0. This is a fantastic place where 
thousands of data are collected. So what we are learning is that the conditions of the deep water are perfect for a neutrino telescope. So now we feel confident enough to move to the next and we are starting to build the telescope. Once neutrinos interact uh, around the telescope, we collect uh, essentially the light that they produce. Now with this light, we will be able to understand where the neutrino are coming from. It could be a galaxy, or maybe it could be something completely new, something that we haven't discovered yet. We have been working with indigenous community partners in really meaningful ways, so that not only do we transfer technology so they capture their own ocean data, but then we help them use it for their own purposes. Ocean Networks Canada are leaders in indigenous engagement. We've been recognized internationally, and we're constantly building our own developments. We're constantly listening to new elders and ensuring that we're always on the right foot in our partnerships. Indigenous communities are on the front lines of ocean observation. They know firsthand the changes in their climate and they've been sustaining their communities for thousands of years. So who better to work with who has that insight? That knowledge is key to our ocean data. So here on the West Coast, we have the Cascada subduction zone and we have the Alaska earthquakes. In 1700, we had a mega tsunami, a 9.0, that indigenous communities tell us that hit the top of mountains. So we need to understand those scenarios. How did that wave interact with the, our coastlines? How, how did it change direction? How did it build up uh, inlets? Having that input as far back as 1700 to now gave us that whole story to understand that we were all right on track with our data. Indigenous are going to be a powerhouse in ocean da data in the future. We're already seeing it with our community-led projects, and there's just so much more to come. One of the new areas that we're following is climate change mitigation and adaptation. That kind of knowledge is going to be critical as we move forward, as this climate crisis continues. So we're really dedicated to solutions, and we have the ability to develop those solutions. And so we're really proud to be part of that ecosystem of solving issues associated with climate change. ONC data really plays a vital role in this fight against climate change. The ONC data coming off of our observatories has been established over many years. Now what this does is it provides really important environmental baselines. So we have an image or a picture of how the ocean environment has been changing for nearly 20 years. And this is key to informing us of how the ocean might change as we go forward. And so these really long established ocean time series are really important to, you know, contextualizing climate change as we move forward. The ocean's already doing the heavy lifting of mitigating our climate you know, absorbed 30% of the CO2, 90% of the heat. So it's already the big player. And we aren't using the, the ocean or enhancing those capabilities in the ocean to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. So we have infrastructure in place where we can help startup companies develop solutions using those enhancements of the existing ocean processes to remove more CO2 from the atmosphere to keep the planet sustainable for the future. Ocean data will help us to get to a future where human life and biodiversity thrives on the planet.